so thrilled to be back with you again this year. You know, I really look forward to this uh, gathering each year because I know we're going to be tackling some of the most important issues facing our children and families here in our city, in our state, and in our country. Uh, and uh, this year uh, is unique and special. And anyway, I know you may have heard me say that other years, uh, but I have to tell you, uh, in the 35 years I've worked for the Harlem Children's Home, I have gone through a number of crises in this city. Uh, the economic crisis, uh, the fiscal crisis in the early 80s, uh, the crack cocaine epidemic, and how they began to talk about poor children as super predators, uh, the mass incarceration uh, that damaged so many families and individuals in this city. And then, of course, it was 9-11, uh, which still uh, impacts our city and Hurricane Sandy, which brought a whole different kind of devastation. In my 35 years, I have never seen any crisis that even comes close to what we're facing today. Uh, here we see the challenges of being poor uh, in New York City and in this state and what happens to these communities when challenges hit uh, it is the poorest of us uh, which are the ones uh, who suffer the most. So, if you ask yourself, who suffered health-wise? Which are the communities that had the most death? Which are the communities that are facing the most mental health crises? Who are worried about eviction? Uh, trying to figure out how they're going to pay their bills. It is the same poor communities that we care about. And COVID-19 has demonstrated uh, what this challenge looks like uh, when you begin to pull apart uh, the supports uh, that families need to survive. And indeed, the most vulnerable group of this whole epidemic are our children. Uh, poor children are the ones whose schools were already struggling. Those schools are, are not providing our children with anything that passes as a quality education uh, today. And for the last year, poor children in this city have not received what anybody would imagine to be an adequate education. Uh, so uh, poor families are the ones least likely to send their children back into schools, even when the schools are open. The trauma that occurred during the dark days of New York City when we were leading this country in infection and in death uh, still traumatize our families. They have not forgotten. And indeed, I think this is a message that we have to remember. This kind of trauma is something that adults don't forget and children don't forget. I dare say, when a child who's 12 is my age, they will remember what life was like in 19, I'm sorry, in 2020 and 2021. So uh, I'm concerned. Uh, I think that uh, right now we've got to do something different. Uh, and I'm challenging you all the way I challenge the Harlem Children's Home. We've got to go out and meet this crisis head on. Uh, so uh, part of what it is we have to do is when the vaccines are out, when folks say, okay, right, we can go back to the arenas, we can go back to the bowling alleys, uh, the schools are open, uh, they're going to be saying everything is fine. Everything will not be fine. Uh, our children need more time on task to catch up. How do you make up for a year? of no education. Uh, you simply can't open the schools and say, okay, great, let's just pick up where we left off. We've got to be prepared to think boldly, to think creatively. Uh, those of us who can give have to give more. Those of us who are working in the trenches, we have to do more work. 
We have to be prepared to think about the summer and vacations and how we use that time to educate our kids so these children have a real opportunity to make up uh, for this lost time. Look, we care about social and economic mobility. Uh, we're going to focus and drill down on unfinished learning, uh, which is part of what we have to tackle. Uh, but my message to you remains the same. We can't go back to business as usual. We overcame the challenges of uh, Hurricane Sandy and 9-11. This is the biggest challenge we will ever face in our lifetime. All of us have to pull together. We all have to say, how much more can we do and what is it I can bring to this city to begin to rebuild, especially in the poorest communities? We're gonna give you some real strategies and you're gonna hear some really interesting ideas of how we move forward. So stay tuned.